good teachers really care about what they do, they really care about their students, and they really care about what results they want for those students to prepare them fully for life. Perhaps the best care they can do is to form a positive relationship with the student. Now that's not a relationship as a friend, but that's a relationship based upon respect, upon trust, upon guidance and support. It's a relationship where, as a teacher, you can go to that student and say, I'm really concerned about, or have you tried this? It's also a relationship where the student can come and ask the questions of the teacher. So the teacher's prompting the students to think and engage in their learning and in their life. I think self-care is fundamentally important in the life of a teacher because to be able to look after yourself, to invest in yourself, as well as to invest in your students allows you to have longevity. You also need time to take yourself away to reflect upon what you're doing to get better. I'm often asked in a number of meetings what I teach. The simple answer would be I teach music or I teach chemistry because in fact they're the academic subjects I have taught. But the true answer is I teach children. And that's both simple but very complex and deep. I don't think you can be a good teacher without actually being a really good learner. So at school we concentrate on leadership development rather than leader development. We concentrate on the development of the group and a language for leadership rather than the development of an individual. And as a part of that, we run a program, for example, for staff, where we get 12 or 13 together each year. We do a series of workshops around leadership and we have them doing an action project. Importantly, as part of that is the makeup of the group. So rather than what would traditionally be done, which might be one or two or three teachers, whether they've been middle management or the leadership team working on it, we look at leadership development as a whole of organisation. So we have a range of non-teaching members of staff, as well as teachers, as well as heads of department, as well as the leadership team, all together in a group. It's important to develop both the needs of the organisation and the needs of the person. Because if you're looking after the needs of the person within a group context, then you're actually looking after the needs of the organisation. The ATAR process has been really fundamentally important within this school. We've spent a three year journey looking at, well, how does the curriculum change? And that's been the easy bit. The harder bit has been, what attitudes, behaviours and processes do we need the students to understand that are different? And what pedagogies do we, and assessments do we need to change for the teachers. So we established a curriculum and pedagogy cadre and it makes use of teachers, um, heads of department, senior leadership team and an external critical friend. And that group has been charged with leading the change process going from the OP senior assessment system that's been in Queensland for the last 30 plus years to a new ATAR system that's fundamentally based upon a different syllabus set of documents and a different assessment regime. Part of the process of that group has been looking at ways in which teaching and learning needs to change. But another part of the process of that group has been looking at, well, how are we interacting with the community? How do we keep the community informed? And how do we understand what their perceptions are on the way through? At this school, we look through our data and we look for things that are called problems of practice. We look for points or issues that are within a group of students learning and we look at ways in which we can address those issues in the pedagogy, in the curriculum, in the way in which the students are engaging themselves within the learning process. Are they independent enough, for example? And by focusing on those problems of practice, we're actually responding to the issues that are coming out through the data that we're looking at to make their learning better. We've got lots of things to learn from a variety of people. And schools being open to learning is great modelling for the staff and importantly for the students and the parents involved within the school. So we can learn lots of things from a variety of processes and ideas that other people have and that they implement. So a part of that process for me has been 
being involved with the Harvard Graduate School of Education for over 15 years as a coach and then as an instructor with their online learning programs. By doing that, I've had access to the ways in which different schools are thinking about and dealing with things such as data, because I was an instructor for the DataWise course. And that enabled me to pick apart different ideas that, that people have throughout from throughout the world about what problems they're looking at, what are they thinking about, and how does that then apply to what we're doing here at RGS. At Grammar, we've gone to great length to establish really meaningful community partnerships in a variety of areas. So within the sport program, for example, we've got a range of partnerships with the North Queensland Cowboys, with Queensland Rowing, and with Queensland Cricket, just as three examples. And the reason why they're very important is they provide support and expertise within a regional area for our students to either perform at that elite level, but also to provide a broad basis for those students who want to engage in those activities um, on a more social participatory level. We've got partnerships with the likes of Australian National University and Central Queensland University Music Department to provide our students in that area access to development within the performance space but also in the composition space so that it's focused upon providing a depth of skill that is beyond what a normal school might be able to access. If we went back a few years, 2015, we didn't have many students engaged in agricultural science studies. So we actually went out and we talked to the kids, we talked to the parents, we talked to the industry and it was clear that there were jobs, and there were important roles for students to play going forward in the future of Australia, but the kids weren't enrolling in the subject. Talking with the kids, they told us that the school farm, 17 hectares, which is not a small school farm, just wasn't real learning for them. It wasn't the type of things that they needed to engage in to prepare them best for their future. So we went out and we talked with AgForce Queensland, the premier agricultural body within the state, and formed a partnership with them that allowed us to do a really unique agricultural program out at Belmont Station, 30 kilometres north of Rockhampton. There they engaged in um, now a Cert 3 in agricultural science on a real scale. 1,200 head of cattle on a property with 17.5 kilometres river frontage. They get to do everything they need to do and develop the skills they need to be really successful in life after school. And they get to learn really up-to-date techniques and engage in research with people from Central Queensland University to actually push their thinking beyond what they would normally think about at home. I think there's probably three or four pieces of advice I'd love to give. First, teach children. Don't teach subjects. Really engage and form that relationship with every student in your, in your classroom so that they feel comfortable, so that they feel uh, respected. Because if they feel comfortable, respected and safe, they're really going to engage in that process of learning. Secondly, be a learner yourself. Be all that you can be. The world, and certainly schools, need teachers who set high expectations for both themselves and the students and pursue them with passion and aren't frightened by failures. Failures in all of our lives are inevitable and as teachers we should use them as part of that learning process to inform us how to do things better and how to engage with our students to get the best results possible. Look after yourself because if we're not well ourselves, we can't have the best possible relationship we can with kids.